Sometimes good design is just about adding a bit of visual interest to your page. So what I've done here is I've created a page where I've got some angled backgrounds. Just to add a little bit of interest to the page. Everything that you build in a web page is going to be rectangular. I mean, we can do border radius to round off corners or make circles, but you're always working with perfectly perpendicular lines vertically and horizontally. With slight changes to the angles of your backgrounds, you can add a lot of interest to the page. We can move these around, we can have them overlapped a little bit, but I'll show you a few variations of this is what we're going to build. So right now, here's my page to start off with. Um, I just added background color to the body. I've got colors set on the headings and the text and some font sizes set. And that's about it. That's all I've got set on the page. So we're going to look at doing all the other things. Now my colors, I'm using just a series of variables. So I came up with the colors. So I'm going to use a single hue and then just make variations on the saturation and lightness to give me the different colors. I need to have some contrasting backgrounds here. So for my light text and dark text, that's the bottom two values here. I've got these four colors that I'm going to use in behind the HTML. Now if we look at the HTML, you can see I've got a header. I've got a main section, a second section, and a third section. So pretty simple. Classes are first, second, and third for the sections, and mast is the, or mast head, this is the class for the header. Now, we can start off by adding colors directly to them. So I could come into each one of these classes and add a background color, but to be able to do the angle without rotating the text, I mean, we could just put transforms on these. You know, I could come in here and I could say, transform, rotate, three degrees. And I'm doing that to all of them. So there we have it. Everything is slightly tilted. And, you know, if that's all you want to do, you could do that. You could alternate the rotation slightly. But I want to keep the text horizontal and rotate the background, just the background. So we're going to take advantage of the pseudo element before. You could do this with the pseudo element after as well. It's going to be that element that's sitting in behind this first section, sitting behind the header, and we're going to put that in there and rotate it. So we need to do the combination of position absolute and position relative. Each one of the sections is going to be set to position relative. So that makes no change whatsoever to the page visually. But it does give us the ability to come into all the before elements and say, these guys are going to be position absolute. Now, I have something that's inside of each one of these, which is tied to its position. We'll need to add some actual content in here and set it to display block. Now, if I were to give this a background color, just a temporary one here. Oh, we got to give it uh, Sorry, position as well. So this one, uh, we're going to be top. We'll just start with zero. Top, left, right, and bottom. All four of those. There we have it. So now I've got this element that fills up the entire size of each one of these things. But it's on top of them. So let's give this one a z-index to make it a little bit higher. And then z-index negative 1 on this guy to put it in behind, just like that. So we have these red rectangles that are in behind each one of them. If we were to come up here and say, um, add a little bit of margin, let's just do it on all the sections. We'll put margin top, oh, let's just say 3 REM. There we have. Now we've got the gaps between them. So we have background colors in behind. So there's like two layers here. We've got the text layer, and then behind it, a layer that has no text or anything. It just has a color, so it's in behind. 
Now we've got it pressed right up against the edge here, so we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that there's some space between this color and the actual text. So I'm going to come back into this element here, our text, and let's put some padding in there. So we'll say 3REM on the top, 2 on the left and right, and we'll put a whole bunch on the bottom. Now I'm putting quite a bit of space around this, especially on the top and bottom, if you look at each one of these. The reason I'm putting so much space above and below is when I rotate this, this top edge could be coming down, or this top edge could be coming down, or this bottom edge could be moving up. Depending on the angle that we use here, this, t this bottom line might come really close to the text. So we want to create enough space so that we're not cutting into that text, that we're leaving enough space. All right, so we'll come in here. I'm going to get rid of the red and we'll start putting in some actual um, actual colors here into each one of these. So I have colors that have defined mast C, first C, second C, third C. These are my background colors. So we'll come in and do that. I'll just change the variable names after I've got them pasted in here. Okay, so we're getting something a lot closer to our target. We have the elements here. Now, I'm also going to, in addition to putting the space here, I want to bring the edges of this out beyond here. So I'm going to add a little bit more padding around here. And the way I'm going to do that is by adjusting these numbers right here. I'm going to come in. I'm going to say that the top of the background is going to be two REMs down. The left side and the right side, we're going to use negative numbers to go outside, further out to the left and right than where they would normally sit. So my background color I've brought back in a little bit. My padding is now going to be exceeding this. My padding for this is sticking up above this line. My padding here is going to be sticking below, below this line. That's why I've got this gap here at the bottom. I've brought this edge up two REMs by saying bottom two REM. I've brought it, but my padding sticks out below. So when I rotate this, this is not going to be exceeding the padding area. Let's actually put some angles in here. So we'll come in the first one. Let's say we'll go up to the top one. And we'll add the transform, rotate. And you want to use small numbers here. You don't want to go extreme. You don't want to say like, okay, 15 degrees. Because that really sets it off. And you run into issues like this where it's going over the text. We're going to keep small numbers. Anything under 5 degrees, 2, 3 degrees, really? That's about all we need. We can do positive, we can do negative numbers. So here's negative four degrees. You can see it's a slight rotation. That worked out pretty well. Now let's do an opposite one for the next one. So he was negative four degrees. We'll try three degrees on him. There we are. And you can see I still have enough space for the text here. Go into the third one. And uh, yeah, let's do negative three. Forget this, do the opposite. So transform, rotate, negative three degrees. There we are. Now, if you run into a situation where you find maybe a heading or something that you've got down here, it doesn't quite fit on one side or the other because of the angle. You can also take headings and shift them to the other side. So we could come in here and say the H2 inside of the second, which I think I've got a style for that already. Yeah, here we are. So if I uncomment that, there, now we have this heading over here where it fits a little bit better. All my text is justified, so it's 
got a straight edge on the left and right. That's what allows me to do this a little bit better too. If I didn't have the justify, it would be much harder to move this over. It would look a little awkward depending on the length of these lines and the words that are inside them. You can get a very jagged edge down here and then the right alignment feels off. But by doing justify for my alignment on the text, it fits over there fine. And then we got to rotate this last one. So we're going to rotate it clockwise, which is a positive number. Let's do four degrees again. There we are. So now we have these angled backgrounds that are showing up. Other things that we can do, we can add um, borders if we want. So I could add a, use one of those colors that I've already defined and just create borders. Let's say two are and we'll take a look and see how that fits. So I'm not going to use the same color as I did for the background, but I'm going to use something that I did for the text. Now here, without the appropriate amount of padding, you can see my border is cutting into this. So we want to make sure that we push this up a little bit. So we're going to come in here to the style for the mast and add a little bit of padding just at the top there. So let's say padding top on that one. Uh, let's make it 5 REM instead of the 3 REM that we had set. There we go. Now we've got some space here. We could add some other backgrounds or borders. Um, doesn't have to be on the top like on this one here we can put a border on the bottom let's say so this is first yeah so on the first element we'll come in here first before we got a background color I'm gonna put a border bottom do the same size as the top again solid or you can make it dashed if you want and we'll take a color for this one um, maybe we'll take the background from the masthead. There we are. So it's a nice contrasting color. Uh, we'll come to the next one. And I'm going to put a border on the top of this one. Same width. And we'll say var is going to be... Let's take the background from this first element here. And if you want, you can add one to the, the bottom one as well. So there we have getting an interesting background going now. Um, this large gap that we have here right now, we've got a margin of three REMs set on the top of each one of these. We can reduce that. We can bring these together to let them touch. So where do we have that margin? There we are, section margin top three REM. If we remove that, can see that we're coming in much closer to touching. We can even change that and make things overlap. This is a different effect. So we could say three negative three REM. So we are making them cross over each other. We can get some interesting effects going that way. Um, styles for all of these. If we add overflow hidden, you can see it got cut off here. So now we have a straight edge all the way down the side with some overlapping happening. And you can play with these numbers. I mean, I'm, I'm just eyeballing some of these numbers, but you can play around with these, adjust them for your content. You could have something that adjusts. I've got a max width set, so it stays at this. You can play around with these things. You can add borders where you want. You can change the borders from solid to, say, dashed. You can use images for the backgrounds if you want as well. So if I set dashed on the top one, there we go. We can add that kind of effect. You can add borders on the top and bottom of each one of them. So I'll leave it up to you how you want to uh, play around with this but I will leave all the code that I've got here, all the HTML and CSS as a code gist that you can download from the description area. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.